Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Sending an alert three at Redbird Airport. We had an air collision. It's down on the airport. This morning on GMSA tragedy at an air show in Dallas after two planes collided mid air. What authorities are saying about the pilots and if there's any survivors. Plus, we're tracking a violent rash of deadly shootings overnight across the Alamo City. What we've been able to find out in the past hour. Taking a look outside with live cam 39 degrees. I cannot believe I just said 39 degrees at six o'clock this morning. And hey, Mike is in for Sarah Spivey. Apparently these cool temps, they're going to stick around for a couple of days. That's right. It's nice to see 39 degrees. It's so, it's so nice. Really? Good morning. It is November 13th. Yep. And we have Jonathan Cotto in the house today. <laughs> That's right, filling in for Max. A pleasure to be here, Sarah and Mike. Looking so you. handsome, both of you in your beards for No Shave November. <sighs> yeah. Is it itching yet? It's starting to get yeah. really itchy. Mm. <laughs> so, two more weeks anyway. We're raising a lot of money. Last, uh, I think, Friday. You're we in talking. first place still? Am I, I, I'm, I'm not uh, sure, but am I know I? as of Friday, <laughs> am um, I? we were number one in the country, our team. Yes. Way to go, yeah. KSAT. So thank you very much for all that. So uh, yeah, some fuzz on the face, a uh, heavy blanket, whatever it takes, because it's cold this morning. It is definitely snuggle weather out there. We got lots of clear skies. Look at these temperatures, officially 38 out there at the airport, 37 Castroville, and then we get some of the freezing readings, Rio Medina down in the 20s, Kerrville, as well as Comfort, and even on, uh, there are some readings on the far northwest side of Bear County that are down below freezing and maybe touching in the uh, 20s. We've got a lot of dry still air out there and that's what's allowing the coldest temperatures when you don't have any breeze at all and that allows the heaviest coldest air to sink down to the surface. But then when you do have a breeze, Okay, you don't get as cold thermometer wise, but then you got a wind chill to deal with. So wind chill in town uh, in Balverde, 31, 32 over there at Randolph, as well as at New Braunfels. Hondo feels like 28 degrees. There is a freeze warning in effect does not include Bear County, but it is going up 35 heading out in toward the hill country, and we will continue to drop down a few more degrees in the next few hours. Mold is on the high side from all the rain that we had. This is yesterday's reading from some of the rain that we had on on Friday, low amounts of everything else. Going to be another beautiful day. First half of the day, lots of sunshine, 55 at noon. Clouds are going to start to move on in here and increase, and we'll have mostly cloudy skies overnight. That's going to lead to some rain chances to start off your work week tomorrow. Not going to last all that long. Plus, temperatures, yeah, if you like cool weather, you're going to love this forecast. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, Jonathan. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, San Antonio police say a man is dead after a drive by shooting at a home on the city's northeast side. SAPD says a vehicle drove up to a home on Castle Guard Drive before someone inside opened fire. Two men were hit. One of them died at the scene. The other man was taken to Bamsey in critical condition. Witnesses didn't have a good description of the vehicle and police are still investigating. This morning, it's been six years since Maria Llamas vanished from a flea market in Potit, and it's been one year since human remains were found near the place she was last seen. Now Maria's family is finally opening up about the possible connection. They tell KSAT's Alyssa Cole, investigators are still working to identify those remains. Maria Jesus Yamas is described as the missing part of the Yamas family. Every, every Sunday we get together and she's not here with us. On November 20th, 2016, Maria and her husband visited the flea market off of State Highway 16, where she disappeared in a matter of minutes. Her family, the community, and law enforcement have been searching for her ever since. Six years of not knowing anything, it's, it's hard. But last year in September, a group of dove hunters found a skull near where Maria was last seen, about 3,200 feet away from the flea market, a place Maria's son Refugio says they're familiar with. We were up and down that area so much. And for school to be found, it's hard to believe we couldn't miss something. The Bear County Medical Examiners attempted to ID the skull, 
but due to it being under the sun for years, the results were inconclusive. Margie Yamas, Maria's daughter, says that wasn't the end of the role for them. They sent the skull to the University of North Texas back in May for a more detailed forensic analysis. Then they'll return um, the remain back to the medical examiner's office here, and the medical examiner's office here will then send it. They told me they'll send it to DPS with the forensic artist for, for a sketch. But the process could take months or years before they get an answer. And while this discovery could bring them one step closer to closure, it's also bringing up a mix of emotions. It's been difficult because this could be the answer. We're, we're not the answer we wanted, but uh, this could be mom, and we at least want to be able to, to know that. While the family wait for investigators to ID the human remains, they're asking the community to submit any information that can lead them to where Maria Yamas is. Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. To your morning headlines, two of the pilots killed in a mid-air collision at a Dallas air show have been identified. The Allied Pilots Association says Terry Barker and Len Root were among the crew members who went down with their B-17 on Saturday. The World War II Flying Fortress was clipped on its back end by a P-63 King Cobra fire before both nosedived into the ground. Authorities have not released a complete list of the people that have died from this crash, but the feds are investigating what happened. Democratic Senator Mark Kelly of Arizona has won a second term, beating GOP challenger Blake Masters. According to NPR, in a race called by the Associated Press, Kelly was up more than five percentage points over Masters. The former NASA astronaut was first elected to the Senate in 2020. With Kelly's win, Democrats are closer to maintaining their slim majority in the Senate. It's 606 and 38 degrees. That's right, and still ahead on GMSA, UTSA football is rolling after another huge win Saturday in the Alamo Dome. We'll look at what this all means for another conference title. Plus, a pet at the San Antonio Humane Society standing by, waiting for a new home this morning. And taking a look outside with live cam, those lights are shining beautifully. It is 38 degrees, San Antonio. Bundle up. There's a little snake. He didn't want, you know, he wants to cuddle in. Yes, he does. Lucy's here from the San Antonio <laughs> Humane Society. Hi. Just a little, oh, and the little belly and everything. Look at him. He's like a little baby. He just wants to be held like a little baby. He's so sweet. Who's this guy? This is Bugs Bunny. <laughs> He's love the name. <laughs> I know. He's a little terrier chihuahua mix. And he's just ready to join a loving family, someone that will see him continue to grow and be, you know, treat like how, a little baby. How is he still just a little puppy? How yeah, old? he's two months old. Okay. So he's still tiny. I don't think he's gonna grow that that big. Yeah. But short hair, easy to adorable. take care of. Yeah, he's just gonna be, you know, big enough to kind of put in your, your handbag if you want to. Put in your purse. <laughs> exactly, but he'll have lots of energy. So yeah. what y'all got going on? So we have a couple of adoption events coming up. Um, this Saturday is the first one with My Pets Vet off of Hebner. So all the adoption fees will be sponsored by My Pets Vet. Oh, wow. Yeah, so come, come to the event. For any for age? For all the puppies that we're going to have there. All the puppies yeah. that will be there, okay. Yes, so that's this Saturday. And we have another one on November 20th at a Petco off of Nagadoches. Okay. So you can learn about these events on our website, sahumane.org slash events. And come adopt or visit us at the shelter too. We have lots of babies like Mr. Bugs funny waiting to be adopted. Okay, and don't forget about all of the uh, volunteer opportunities, fostering. There oh, is yeah. desperate need for fosters as always, well. So always. head on over to the uh, San Antonio Humane Society and that beautiful campus there right along Fredericksburg Road just outside 410 or give them a call 226-7461. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Bugs Bunny's so cute. Oh, the little babies like that and just want to be held and the snuggling. Little, the little belly. I need to make my way over to the Humane Society. I need, <laughs> I need another dog. Another one. Another one. Just get another one. <laughs> How many do you have? I have one. And okay. thanks to Sarah, I have one. She convinced me to get a dog. I was like, you don't have a dog? You need <laughs> yeah. to get a dog. It'll change your life. Yeah, thank you. Thank well, you for that. Go right over there. Look, Sorry, I'm, fall I'm <laughs> falling. <laughs> I'm falling this morning. She has to. We've got this riser right here. So and right here. Uh, Mike was actually just asking right before, what is it like to be put on a pedestal? Yes. And I was like, well, like a queen. <laughs> Next to two handsome gentlemen. <laughs> it's too much. too much. Too much. I thought you were anyway. rushing over to the Humane Society. <laughs> if you uh, if you want to go take your little one for a walk or something like that, make sure everybody bundles up this morning because it is cold out there. Case in point, 
this guy. Oh. Now, my question is, is the dog sticking out its tongue because it is like, ha, I've got this on, or if you're going to take my picture with this on, I'm going to stick my tongue out? I think? I think this the the second the yeah. second one he's like take that yeah it's a great shot though <laughs> love that scan the QR code and uh, send us in some of your KSAT Connect pictures of all of your <laughs> beanie just makes it with that dog so anyway appreciate that all right lots of clear skies out there and boy it is a cold morning yeah it's coldest we've seen since way back last winter and we do have freeze warning in effect for uh, the hill country going up I 35 doesn't include Bear County and basically what this will what will happen after this is when there's widespread uh, freezing temperatures in a particular county, then that's the the last of the freeze warnings for the season. It just kind of is a good indication or uh, advisory that the first widespread freeze is going to be happening. So here in Bear County, even if some of the uh, northern northwestern portions of the county do hit freezing, if it's not more widespread, will still be available for another freeze warning. All right, 29 right now in Kerrville, 26 comfort, Bernie stage at 34. And then yes, we do have wind chill temperatures, 32 in New Braunfels, Randolph at 32 and it feels like 28 right now in Hondo. Not much of a breeze out there. And these are all the ingredients that are in place for good, as we say, radiational cooling. We've got clear skies, very dry air and very light or no wind. And obviously some of the coldest temperatures where there isn't any breeze and that just allows the heaviest, coldest air to settle down here to the surface. And again, these dew points after the latest front moved on through here, bone dry air is in place and it doesn't hold the heat in very well, but then it heats up fairly quickly. So we will be gaining a good, oh gosh, 25 degrees throughout the course of the day, kind of like um, a couple of weeks ago when we had that really dry air in place. And we start off with a lot of sunshine uh, in the first portion of the day. Then the clouds are going to start to increase. We'll be up to 55 at noon, topping off at 61 later on today. A little bit more than 10 degrees below the normal high temperature, the average, which is low 70s right now. Then the clouds are going to be thickening up overnight. Here's computer model. A couple of these clouds hanging around here going into the afternoon hours, especially in the northern half of the area. And then again, they continue to, to thicken up. The wind's going to shift around to the southeast, pulling in a bit more humidity around here. Lots of cloudy skies overnight then and a couple of showers around here tomorrow morning. So just plan ahead that it's going to be on the damp side for morning commute heading off to work and school. And that's going to be the case through the first half of the day with some of these showers. There may actually be a couple of thunderstorms well off to the southeast as we go into the early afternoon hours, then that will continue to move on out of here. Got another reinforcing front that's going to be moving on in here, which is just going to help to keep temperatures on the cool side. So 55 today at noon, plenty of sunshine. Then we start to see a few more clouds kind of sliding on in here later on this afternoon, 61 high temperature and tomorrow we will start off in the mid 40s. Lots of clouds. It's going to be on the damp side tomorrow morning and then we'll clear on out. Another reinforcing shot of cold air moves on in here and then we get another front by the end of the week and all these numbers across the board highs and lows are averaging 10 to 15 degrees below their respective. Wow. Normals. Definitely a cool week. Yeah, I love it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm I like it for about a week, and then I'm like, okay. <laughs> That's the nice I'm, thing about really? Texas is we get a little bit of everything. We get everything. But you can always put on a jacket and a sweater. Okay, did you turn your heater on? I yeah. know, like, oh, you did? Oh, yeah. Because I know you said before, I, you know, we try not to turn the heater on unless we absolutely have to. Like, you don't like you don't like turning the heater on, and your your boys like to turn it up, and you say, no, we don't need it. Well, I didn't never said that about really? not turning the heater on. No. Oh my gosh. I just don't like it too high because then you you know you put on a sweater or something like that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I no, I I didn't turn Most my Most of the heater battles on. over the air conditioner, but that's a whole different <laughs> that's, that's another segment. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Thank you so much, Mike. And yeah, if it's cold, turn on your heater. Stay nice and nice and warm. <laughs> All right. After the break, UTSA isn't the only football team in town that's dominating. We'll look at Trinity's run to an undefeated regular season. That's just in a bit. First, we're going to take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, seven, eight, nine. Fireball six, daily four, eight, zero, four, eight. Fireball eight. Cash five. Those lucky numbers are one, 11, 27, 32, and 35. Texas Lotto, those numbers are 1, 19, 24, 38, 39, and 48. Let's take a look at these Powerball numbers, 16, 20, 44, 57, 58. Powerball 6, Power Play 4. Good luck. You did it.
UTSA football kept their hot streak going this weekend with their seventh straight win, this time against Louisiana Tech. Since losing their season opener in triple overtime against Houston back in September, the Roadrunners haven't lost again in the Alamo Dome. The UTSA offense put on a show, scoring on nine out of ten drives, blowing the game open early, leading 34 to seven at halftime. The defense also showed out getting three interceptions and two fumbles from the Bulldogs. Those turnovers helped the Roadrunners score 20 more points and they win big 51 to seven. The Roadrunners have now clinched a share of the conference USA title. They'll hit the road this next weekend to face Rice at noon. Meanwhile, Trinity was back home with a chance to clinch a second straight undefeated regular season. The Tigers rolled to a huge 31-0 at halftime and they cruised to a 38-0 victory. Trinity finishes the regular season at 10-0. Next up, the Division Three playoffs. All right. 39 degrees at 621. That's right. And up next, San Antonio FC is one win away from their first USL title. And they'll need help from the Alamo City tonight to get it done. We'll finish the fight. We'll have that championship preview in just moments. This morning, San Antonio FC looking to win their first title in the USL. And tonight is their first ever championship match. They're facing a stiff challenge from Louisville City FC, but the team knows fans will pack the stands tonight and give them a much needed home field advantage. We know what we're capable of. We've shown time and time again this year that we can beat anyone. Most points this season, you know, that speaks for itself. So really confident in us and our game model and what we're going to do. The game kicks off tonight at 7.30 at Toyota Field. Tickets are pretty much sold out, so if you're going to be loud, and proud and help them finish the fight for the Alamo City. All right, Jonathan, show us the t-shirt. Oh, yes, yes, So yes. J Jonathan is a fan. You're going to the 100%. game tonight. 100%. I'll be there in attendance, helping them finish the fight. I love this is that. the playoffs 2020 Show the back, show the back. So cute. Definitely. It's, it's going to be so much fun. Those games are out of this world, Sarah. But you were saying that the San Antonio fans, that we really need to pick it up because when like they played Austin, the, those fans were like yes, into another we need level. Some, we need some chants. We need some cheers. And we need to just coordinate okay, those. Okay, you, I'm putting you in charge. <laughs> I'm going to be the, the president of that. cheerleader. I have to be. I you're have you're to the be. yell, like, are they in College Station, the yell leader. <laughs> the yell leader. I'll take on that responsibility. But I have to tell you, Sarah, the, the stands, the energy, it is powerful it is it's so much fun to be there so I, much fun. i'm so jealous you're going tonight <laughs> all right well it's going to be a win for sure so fingers crossed san antonio we got this all right finish, finish the, fight. the fight okay up next at 6 30 we'll introduce you to the first native american woman that nasa has ever launched into space why this accomplishment means so much to her and the one personal item she took with her and we're tracking new details on a second deadly shooting overnight this one targeting a husband and wife don't miss the latest at the top of 6.30. Good morning. It's 6.30 on Sunday, November 13th, and we have Jonathan Cotto with us this morning. That's right. I am so excited to be here this morning, San Antonio. Sarah, thank you for having me. Mike. Um, you look super handsome with your beard. Oh, thank you. And I, okay, so yesterday we were telling RJ, we're like, I love the No Shave November because you guys are being so competitive on social media <laughs> that you're posting these like smolders, like the <laughs> selfie smolders. And I feel like you're the only one that I can really like, you're, you're convincing. Oh, thank you. When you, when you do that. like the smolder selfie. <laughs> <laughs> I try. You should see, uh, you should read our, our men's chat we have going on. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun there. We send in our pictures there and it's, we kind of just tease each other. It's, this is a good, good teasing. <laughs> I, I know, and, and Mike, of course, number one, winning, leading the pack here with raising money. No smolders here, though, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's those guys. Are the, yeah, and it is funny as they kind of 
banter back and forth there. So, but thank you very much for all the folks that have donated. Keep donating. We've got a couple more weeks to go with this. We are in first place. Uh, Team KSAT is in the country. So that is absolutely wonderful. All right. Speaking of wonderful, it is a gorgeous start this morning and we've got temperatures that we're going to do a little AR here. Nope, I guess not. We'll just uh, jump right into uh, some of the uh, temperatures around the area right now. We've got freezing readings heading out. I 10 in toward the hill country. Bernie stage right at freezing. Kerrville 30, 25 right now in comfort. Yeah, it is officially really cold out there. Plus, there is somewhat of a wind chill to deal with. Not much of a breeze, which is why we are so cold, but where there is a breeze feels like 28 right now at Hondo, 32 Randolph, as well as in New Braunfels, definitely bundle up. And we do have freeze warnings still in effect through the rest of the morning for the Hill Country and then also going up the I-35 corridor. Doesn't include Bear County, and he may be touching freezing in your backyard, but we're not gonna hit it there at the, uh, at the airport this morning. Cold and just a beautiful, beautiful start this morning. Then we are going to see some increasing clouds as the uh, the day rolls on. Why? Well, there we go. Yeah, we'll be up to 60 for a high temperature, low 60s later on today. Tomorrow, then we get the clouds coming in here overnight, and then we're going to have a wet start tomorrow. There are going to be some showers around the area, maybe a little bit of fog, sunshine, and once again we get up right up into the 60 degree range around the area. And then the rest of the week, we are going to stay on the cool side. Got another front that's moving through here late tomorrow into Tuesday, kind of reinforcing a push of cooler air and then another one late in the week. So yeah, if you like cold weather, definitely is going to be staying on the cold side this week. We'll get that all sorted out. Small rain chances, not anything big, but small rain chances. We'll talk about that as well. Sarah, Jonathan. Mike, thank you. New this morning, San Antonio police say a husband and wife were involved in a deadly shooting overnight happening on the city's west side. It happened at the 200 block of Randall Avenue around 2.20 early this morning. SAPD says two men, they got out of a car and allegedly shot at a husband and wife who were arriving at their grandparents' home. The husband was hit multiple times and died at the scene. The wife also shot multiple times and taken a university hospital in serious condition. So far, police haven't said anything about the suspects. A man is in the hospital this morning after being shot multiple times early this morning on the south side. It happened around 224 this morning along Rayburn Drive. Witnesses in a nearby apartment heard the shots and called police. The victim was taken to Bamsey in serious condition and police aren't saying anything about a potential suspect. The family is safe on the north side after a house fire. Firefighters say it happened on Cadbury Drive just before 3 o'clock this morning. The fire quickly spread, but first responders were able to get the blaze under control. The home had heavy damage to it, but the cause has not been determined. San Antonio police say a suspected home intruder is dead this morning after getting shot during a confrontation with the homeowner. This happened around 6 last night at a house on Hazel Street near Frio City Road and South Brazos Street. The homeowner told police when he went to the back door, he found the alleged intruder. The homeowner then fired two gunshots, hitting the suspect in the chest. First responders performed CPR but were unsuccessful. The suspect died at the scene. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office is still working on his ID. And we know the name of the two people killed in a crash on the access road of Loop 410 last Thursday morning. Their 17-year-old Benito Vasquez and 20-year-old Jasmine Tobias. That's according to the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office. The crash happened on Loop 410 near Highway 151 on the west side. San Antonio police say Vasquez was speeding and took a curve too fast causing his vehicle to hit the concrete base of a traffic light before catching on fire. Tobias, the passenger, was extracted by police but died at the scene. Vasquez was taken to University Hospital where he later died. Now to a top story we've been following all morning, a deadly mid-air collision between two planes at an air show in Dallas. After colliding both historic military planes, nosedived into the ground about 10 miles outside of the city. ABC's Christine Sloan has the details on the aftermath. 
The FAA and the National Transportation Safety Board are searching for clues after two historic military aircraft collided Saturday during an air show. The planes exploding into a ball of flames and sending black smoke billowing into the sky. Sending an alert three at Redford Airport. We had an air collision it's down on the airport. The incident taking place at the Wings Over Dallas Air Show at Dallas Executive Airport. The FAA says a Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress and a Bell P-63 King Cobra fighter plane collided. This is a World War II flight demonstration type air show where we highlight uh, the aircraft and their capabilities and, and what actually happened in World War II. It's very patriotic. Boeing says most B-17s were scrapped at the end of World War II, with only a handful remaining today, largely featured at museums and in air shows. These guys do uh, very thorough training. They have a lot of minimums they have to meet and criteria they have to meet. Um, so this is not just somebody that's out doing something. These are very well-trained folks that have been doing it for a long time. No paying customers were on the aircraft, according to the owner. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. ABC News is projecting Democrats will keep their slim majority in the Senate. This comes after Democratic Senator Mark Kelly of Arizona won a second term beating GOP challenger Blake Masters. Nevada's incumbent Senator Catherine Cortez Masto also claimed victory in Nevada. She was up against Republican Adam Luxalt, winning by just about 5,000 votes. This win gives Democrats the 50 seats needed for the majority, regardless of the outcome of next month's runoff election in Georgia. But even if Republicans win in Georgia, Vice President Kamala Harris would continue to cast the tie-breaking vote, guaranteeing the Democrats' majority. Now, the Biden administration is no longer accepting applications for student loan forgiveness after a second federal court shut down the program. White House officials say about 26 million people had already applied and 16 million applications had been approved. This week, a Texas judge ruled President Biden overstepped his authority in creating the program without congressional approval. Back in August, the president announced plans to forgive up to $20,000 in federal student loans. A federal court is considering whether to impose a permanent ban. 638 and 38 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, we'll introduce you to the first Native American woman that NASA has ever launched into space. The one personal item she took with her and how it brings her strength. Facial hair coming in strong as I look at Jonathan Cotto right now <laughs> and Mike Osterhage. We're talking about No Shave November and how you can make a big difference. And taking a look outside with live cam. Folks, it's 38 degrees, Sarah. It's time to bust out the scarves. Oh my gosh, you need to have a hat. Cover your ears, cover your neck, stay warm. Mike's going to have our full forecast when we come back. Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. No Shave November is in full swing, folks, and you've probably seen a big change on some of the guys here at KSAT. Yeah, just look at him right here at the handsome face, Jonathan <laughs> Goto. Everyone has a reason for participating. You know, my partner in crime, Max Massey, he's off today, but here's what he had to say about why he's doing it. Why I do No Shave November. Cancer has affected so many of my family members and so many of my friends and the people I care about. So to just put the razor down for a month to help raise awareness and raise money, it means so much to me. We can raise money not only to help find a cure, but to help local families who are going through the unimaginable. All right, so here's a look at our leaderboard. The top seven leading the way we have Mike. Wow. $1,735. That's really impressive. Yeah, Mike is leading the way right behind him. Well, not right behind him. <laughs> In second, Mark Austin with $1,205. <laughs> um, so I want to give some love to Jonathan Cotto at $375. You know, you're beating Max yeah, at 325. If he I'm watches shocked. this, he's going to be very upset. <laughs> he's super competitive. Oh, yeah. The competition is on, folks, but it's, it's a friendly competition. And again, it's for a really good hey, cause. Hey, let's get Jonathan Goto up to $1,000 and Max up to $1,000. Yes, let's yes, get let's both of them it. up to 1000 And you can do so by 
right now, take out your phone and open your camera app and scan this QR code. This takes us right to the page and you can donate for your favorite KSAT personality. That's right. You can search for Jonathan Cotto. That's Jonathan <laughs> without the H. C-O-T-T-O. Or just go with Team Gray here. <laughs> the man in charge in the lead. Look at him. You know, t t team, team Silver Fox, I like to say Silver Fox versus Gray Hair, is really doing well this year. Yes, thank you very much to everybody. He won last and, year and as that's well. The, and that's the fun thing. It's, it's this fun little competition that we have. And there's about, I believe, 13 different organizations, uh, different cancer organizations, and we've picked various ones. So it's not just about cancers that specifically affect men. But um, it is, to, you know, like, like uh, Max was saying, it is to raise awareness. And yeah, you, right. you said that we're in the lead right now? Across That's the, across uh, the as of Friday when we were talking about this around the country. Because last year around the country we came in second place overall because we got a little more than twenty thousand bucks. That's amazing. And yeah, last year's goal was ten, ended up with twenty. So this year's goal is now twenty. So hopefully, but as of right now, we are in first place in the country. So love to see it. All love for a good cause. It. Come Thank on. Thank you to everyone that's already <laughs> donated. Yeah. We appreciate it so much. Yes. Those of us that have lost the color in our hair. You've earned it. <laughs> Show your support. <laughs> he knows exactly you, what he's doing. Do you, notice how, do you notice how the, on that, that leaderboard we showed that it's all the, the morning folks? Yeah. But thank true. you to all those folks who get up early. We have a, we have a great we, we, audience. Yes, we appreciate that. If you're getting up early outside having a cup of coffee, make sure you do bundle up. And hopefully that's an insulated mug because coffee ain't going to stay very warm in this kind of weather. There's a couple of high wispy clouds out there right now, but just an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous morning. We do have the freeze warning in effect throughout the rest of the morning for the hill country and then obviously going up I-35, not for Bear County. We have a few readings in the northwest portion of the county that are below freezing, but for the most part, it is staying above freezing in and around Bear County, but then you go out toward Bernie stage. Now in your backyard out there, even though these reporting areas are not showing that you may be at freezing or below and 25 right now in comfort, little bit of a uh, wind chill to deal with. 28 is what it feels like in Hondo and 32 New Braunfels, as well as at Randolph 30 in Balverde right now. And where there's not any breeze, that's where some of the coldest temperatures are because you have the Clear skies out there, very dry air, light wind that allows the heaviest, the coldest, densest air to settle, settle down here to the surface. We are going to be staying beautiful all morning long. That great sunrise, a couple of wispy clouds out there. A few more clouds as the day rolls on. We'll be in the mid 50s at noon, so still jacket weather at noon. And even throughout the rest of the afternoon, we're going to see some of these clouds then continue to thicken up. And especially as we go into tonight, wind is going to start to shift around out of the southeast. That's going to pull in a little bit more in the way of moisture. Here's the clouds that are thickening up later on this afternoon going into this evening. And then tomorrow morning, we are going to have a couple of uh, showers around the area. And that's going to make for a damp commute. We'll probably have some fog hanging around here as well. And then we go into throughout the rest of the morning, noontime, things are going to start to clear on out. And then another front's going to move through here. And that's going to be sort of a reinforcing shot of cool air. Normal high, 72 degrees. Nowhere near that. 10, 15 degrees below normal. Normal low 51. In many instances, we're going to be again 10 to 15 degrees below normal all week long. And some indications will be staying on the cool side uh, going in toward Thanksgiving week as well. 55 degrees at noon today. Plenty of sunshine, a couple of wispy clouds here and there. And then more clouds this afternoon. 61 for high temperature. Again, 10 to 15 degrees below normal. And tomorrow we're going to be starting off with some showers around the area. And then clear out late in the afternoon. Tuesday looks beautiful. More clouds. Thursday, another small chance for some rain. We get a reinforcing shot of cool air tomorrow with the front and then also Friday going into Saturday with keeping another front, keeping temperatures down in the 50s. Have you put Love up it. your Christmas decorations yet? Today. Okay. Yes. All right. Some of my neighbors have. Yeah, my, my yeah. neighbors across the street, they put, I was like, oh no, I've got, we've got, a, we've got a lot of catching up to do. I mean, is it too early? This is a constant debate here. I, I was talking to one of my sons. He's like, you can't do that. I said, why not? I said, it just expands the Christmas. He goes, <laughs> and I said, I'll leave Thanksgiving inside, though, for Thanksgiving. 
but your wife doesn't like let you turn the lights on until after Thanksgiving. She agreed this year, though. Oh wow! Look yes. at her in the Christmas spirit early. <laughs> She's out of town. I was right whistling now. So she doesn't a know Christmas her. tune the other day, so I'm I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. I just set my radio this morning. <laughs> 1019. I was listening to Christmas music coming oh in. Oh my god! Oh, Christmas our, is in our there Hallmark our King out. over here. All right. <laughs> I love it. 648 and 38 degrees. And still to come, speaking of Christmas, Christmas <laughs> is around the corner, and we're getting a first look at some of the more famous parts of the holiday. We'll look at what's going on in New York before 7. It's been 32 years since Congress passed a law making November Native American Indian Heritage Month. The entire month is set aside to celebrate the many contributions, the ancestors and the children of the original inhabitants of the land we now call the U.S. And this morning we're highlighting the first Native American woman that NASA has ever launched into space. ABC's Faith Abubi has her story. The SpaceX Dragon Endurance cruise ship blasted off into space with four astronauts and the hopes and dreams of countless people. At the helm of the Crew-5 mission, Nicole Mann. This is Nicole Mann on board the International Space Station. The NASA astronaut has become somewhat of a celebrity. It's so incredible. I've received a lot of letters. Humbled as she celebrated not only for being the first woman to serve as mission commander, but also the first indigenous American woman from NASA to ever launch into space. The 45 year old born in California is a registered member of the Wailaki of the Round Valley Indian tribes. I feel very proud to be on board the space station and certainly to represent Native Americans and indigenous people on board. I think it's important that we recognize that there are all different types of people on board the international. National Space Station, not only from different countries, but from different backgrounds and different nationalities. Mayan holds a bachelor's and master's degree in mechanical engineering and has deployed twice to Iraq and Afghanistan flying jets in the Marine Corps. Space and the stars have always fascinated her. The Corporal Main says she never thought she could be an astronaut until later in life. I had never really understood what an astronaut did, um, who became astronauts, what it really took to become an astronaut. Unfortunately, in my mind at that time, it was not in the realm of possibilities. Today, Mann is leading a team that's conducting numerous space experiments in an orbital lab. Her son and husband back here on Earth. The only personal item with her in space is this dream catcher. It's pretty amazing in microgravity um, because it just floats and the, and the feathers kind of go every which way. A sacred Native American symbol that's believed to catch bad dreams and release good spirits. A constant reminder of where she came from. I think that the strength I find in that is a gift from my mother. It's the strength to know that I have the support of my family and community back home and that when things are difficult or things are getting hard or I'm getting burnt out or frustrated, that strength is something that I will draw on to continue towards a successful mission. Faith Abube, ABC News. Way to go. Love to see it. Definitely inspiring. You go, girl. Culture. Yes, absolutely. She is a amazing woman. Yeah, such a force. Nice to see that. Well, time is 6.55. Temperature is 38 degrees. Here's what's coming up at 7 on Good Morning America. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, breaking overnight, those Democratic victories in Nevada and Arizona, securing the majority of seats and control of the Senate. President Biden calling attention to the December 6 runoff in Georgia and control of the House still on the line. What you need to know. Also this morning, new details of the harrowing mid-air crash at a Dallas air show. The FAA and National Transportation Safety Board now investigating what went wrong. And big opening weekend for Black Panther, Wakanda forever the box office numbers and projections and what theater experts are saying about the film it's all ahead here on GMA welcome back well folks if you haven't been counting we're officially 42 days away from Christmas I love this and as a sign of the holiday season the famous Rockefeller Center Christmas tree it has arrived in New York 82 foot tall Norway spruce weighing in 14 tons Arrived Saturday morning from Queensbury, New York. It was cut down over a few hours time on Thursday. The tree is estimated to be close to 90 years old, nearly as old as Rockefeller Christmas tradition itself. It will be fully dressed and prepped ahead of the official tree lighting ceremony on November 30th. 
Sure does feel like Christmas out there. Got a couple of high clouds already that are sort of uh, moving on in here, and we have temperatures now that are well down into the 30s. Some freezing readings in portions of the hill country. A little bit of a wind chill in spots. Just a slight breeze out there. And it's going to stay cool today. Clouds will continue to increase throughout the day. A high today of 61. Ah. Oh. Thank Let's you, Mike. See. And you know, speaking of Christmas, I read on our website, haven't made my way to Travis Park, but our tree is there now. Or will it, be it's, soon. It's, yeah, oh. it's going to get there. Yeah. They're going to have a whole thing. I think on yep. Tuesday, we're going to be out there as a light up ceremony. Yeah. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. One man dead and another seriously injured. What San Antonio police are saying about a deadly overnight shooting. Investigations now happening after that, after that mid-air crash at a Dallas air show just coming into our newsroom. We now know that six people have died in that crash. Hear from the people who saw the planes collide. Taking a look outside through live cam. It is 40 degrees, San Antonio. We'll be checking in with Mike later on in the show. Good morning, San Antonio. It's 8 o'clock on Sunday, November 13th, and I am here with Sarah. It's such a pleasure to be here this such morning. Such an honor to have you, Jonathan, here with us this morning. Max Massey has been off this weekend, and you were took part of a very amazing event yesterday. Talk That's about right. That. Yes, it was such a pleasure uh, and truly an honor to be uh, MC for the American Heart Association, Texas. They had their heart stroke walk yesterday morning you can see the turnout there on your screen it was just so incredible to see everyone out participating for a good cause and it looked cold out there people bundled up there you are <laughs> you know that's daniel and we had the opportunity to hear his personal testimony yesterday morning and i have to say sarah it was a heartfelt testimony mm. he is a survivor so you can already imagine the words he shared with everyone in attendance well it looked like a successful event and i'm so proud of you emceeing thank that you. event thank you and mike it like you can see people wrapped in blankets mm -hmm. out there yesterday. Pretty much the same deal today. Oh, yeah, yeah, cold yesterday morning and even colder this morning. Had a lot of uh, first freezes in parts of the hill country this morning. As a matter of fact, in some areas, it is still freezing right now. We're at 41 degrees. Got a couple of high wispy clouds hanging around here. And look at that bottom number. Dew points at 25, which means the air is just bone dry out there. It is a wonderful morning and we're not going to get that hot today. Just 61 for a high temperature later on this afternoon, which is 10 degrees below normal. The aquifer in yesterday's reading went up four tenths of a foot and the allergens, a lot of mold that uh, rain that we had on Friday. Pigweed and juniper are both on the low side. All right, check out some of these temperatures up there in the hill country. Still at freezing in Kerrville, 29 at both Bandera as well as Comfort, 39 in Helotus and right at freezing up the road in Bulverde. And there's a hint of a wind chill in spots. So it feels like 38 here in town, just a puff of a breeze out there. Not much, but when you have this cold of temperatures, it obviously doesn't take much as far as the uh, the wind to get that little extra bite to some of these these readings out there. Still have the freeze uh, warning in effect for the hill country and then going up I-35 and that's through the rest of the morning. As far as the rest of today, again, 55 at noon, 61 for high temperature. Like I said, 10 degrees below normal. Clouds going to be increasing as we go into the overnight hours and especially tomorrow morning, probably going to be starting off with some rain around the area for your morning commute tomorrow. Plus, it stays on the cold side all week long. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Thank you, Mike. Well, this morning, San Antonio police say a man is dead after a drive-by shooting at a home on the city's northeast side. SAPD say a vehicle drove up to a home on Castle Guard Drive before someone inside opened fire. Now, the two men were hit and one died at the scene. The other man was taken to Bamsey in critical condition. Witnesses did not get a good description of the vehicle and police are still investigating. A man is in the hospital this morning after being shot multiple times in the city's south side. It happened around 224 this morning along Rayburn Drive. Now witnesses in a nearby apartment heard the shots and called police. The victim was taken to Bamsey in serious condition. Police aren't saying anything about a potential suspect at this time. One man is dead after, uh, this morning after being shot during a confrontation. That's according to San Antonio police. A suspected home intruder was shot during an argument with a homeowner last night on Hazel Street near Frio City Road and South Brazo Street. The homeowner told police when he went to his back door, he found the alleged intruder. The homeowner then fired two gunshots, hitting the suspect in the chest. 
Now, police performed CPR but were unsuccessful. The suspect died at the scene. We now know the name of the two people killed in a crash on the access road of Loop 410 from back on Thursday morning. Their 17-year-old Benito Vasquez and 20-year-old Jasmine Tobias. This is according to the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office. The crash happened on Loop 410 near Highway 151 on the city's west side. San Antonio police say Vasquez was allegedly speeding, took a curve too fast, which caused his car to hit the concrete base of a traffic light. The vehicle then caught fire. Tobias, the passenger, was extracted by police, but also died at the scene. Vasquez was taken to Univer University Hospital, where he later died. And now to that devastating air crash at an air show in Dallas. We've just learned that six people were killed in that crash. Two historic planes colliding in the air as thousands of horrified spectators watched from the ground. ABC's Mireya Villarreal has the latest from Dallas. This morning, new details of the harrowing mid-air crash at a Dallas air show after two planes collided, falling from the sky, landing on Highway 67 and bursting into flames. We had an air collision it's down on the airport. 660, there is uh, also some uh, down on the service road of 67 southbound. The FAA and NTSB now investigating what went wrong at the Wings Over Dallas event, a show featuring featuring commemorative Air Force planes. Spectators at the airport and nearby capturing the crash between the Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress and a Bell P-63 King Cobra. Still no information yet released on those on board and if anyone survived. The B-17 normally has a crew of four to five. But that was what was on the aircraft and the P-63 is a single piloted fighter type aircraft. This is the seventh year this event has been held in Dallas without any issues until now. Hank Coates is the CEO of the Commemorative Air Force. This is a World War II flight demonstration type air show where we highlight uh, the aircraft and their capabilities and, and what actually happened in World War II. It's very patriotic. Uh, the maneuvers that they were going through were not dynamic at all. It was what we call bombers on parade. Organizers estimate between four and 6,000 people were around when the collision occurred, but say no bystanders were injured. What struck me was how strange it was that the pilot of the fighter dove in a way that, uh, that indicated he didn't think anybody else was around. The NTSB has an awful lot of questions. Why did the pilots of these various airplanes not know where each other were? Who was in the wrong place? Well, just unfortunate situation there for everybody involved. I yeah. know. Time 807, temperature 40 degrees. Okay, a baby gorilla joining the zoo in Dallas. What makes this little guy so special? And next, a look at San Antonio Veterans Day Parade. What people thought and why they say they were proud to attend. 40 degrees at 807 this morning. If you want to get outside and enjoy the morning, you're going to want to bundle up, cover the kiddos' ears, a big jacket, and hey, this cold weather, it's going to stick around. Mike will have that forecast when we come back. The chilly weather didn't stop the Veterans Day celebrations in San Antonio yesterday. Thousands gathered in downtown for the 21st annual United States Military Veterans Parade. People from not only San Antonio, but from across the country came to Military City USA to honor those who have served our country. Different organizations, veteran groups and schools participated. It makes me feel very proud, um, very proud that the city is honoring all our veterans because if it's not for them, we wouldn't be under freedom and under that flag and protecting us every day. After a two-year hiatus, uh, I, I just believe that everybody needs to come uh, downtown San Antonio and uh, spread a little cheer for our veterans. And that hiatus was due to COVID the last time this event was held in 2019. Um, and you know, also, thank you, Jonathan, our, say, our local veteran, veteran right here. here at KSAT. Thank you so much for oh, your service. Thank you for that. Yeah. Here's a hint. Navy. Eight How many years? years away. <laughs> eight years. Eight yeah. years? Okay. I served eight years. Yes, sir. Stationed on board the Lincoln? Was USS it? Theodore Roosevelt. The Roosevelt, okay. It was in Norfolk, Virginia. Now it's in San Diego, of course. After I serve, it goes to the West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank yeah. you so mm -hmm. much, Jonathan.
All right, talk about the cool weather yesterday and then last evening out there at the Alamo Quarry. Stephanie Cerna and I were out there, and there's her beautiful daughter, Rooney, and we were welcoming Santa Claus, lighting all the lights out there, and it was to benefit uh, Family Services. So, folks, and you can still donate to Family Services all the way through December 24th. There was a bunch of people out there, perfect weather for it, just enough of a... Christmas spirit weather. Chilled in the air, <laughs> yes, and Santa Claus kind of sort of made it snow out there as well. Well, so it was a lot of fun. Folks had a great time out there. So thank you all very much for attending that. And we've got a couple of high wispy clouds out there right now, but otherwise a gorgeous morning. Make sure you do bundle up though. Still have a freeze warning in effect for parts of the Hill Country and then going up the I-35 corridor does not include Bear County. 29 still in Comfort, 31 now Bandera just below freezing, right after freezing up, obviously up there in Kerrville. Same thing at Balverde, 41 out there at the airport and Seguin has dropped down to a 34 degrees. We did hit 38 on the hourly readings. The official low temperature so far this morning. Little bit of a wind chill in a couple of spots. Rio Medina feels like 37. Randolph 37 as well as in uh, New Braunfels. Not much of a breeze out there and that's the reason why we got so cold because we had clear skies overnight. No blanket on top of us. Very dry air. Doesn't hold the heat in and then light or no wind and that allows the cooler, heavier air, more dense air to settle down here to the surface. We're going to warm up fairly quickly through Throughout the day, upper 40s by mid morning, 55 by noon, and the clouds are going to continue to sort of thicken up as we go into the late afternoon hours. Going to make it up to 61 later on this afternoon for a high temperature, and then have mostly cloudy skies around here tonight. So it won't cool off as much. Still going to be a cool start or a cool night and a cool start tomorrow morning, and we'll have obviously lots of clouds overnight, which computer model is handling very well. And with the clouds comes the moisture. Wind's going to be shifting around to the southeast. And so by commute time, heading off to work, heading off to school tomorrow morning, you are going to have a few scattered light showers around the area, and that's going to continue to be the case throughout most all of the morning, just uh, sort of few and far between. There may actually be a couple of thunderstorms, especially further off down to the southeast, and this will be the situation through lunchtime. And then we're going to start to clear on out from west to east later on in the day, and that says yet another Cool front moves on through here, sort of another reinforcing shot of cooler air. So we'll make it up to 60, then just stay in the 50s going into the middle part of the week. The normal high right now is 72, 10, 15 degrees below normal on the high end of the scale. Low end of the scale, normal low is 51 degrees, so we are going to be anywhere from 5, 10, close to 15 degrees below normal as well for the low end of things. And this latest chunk, this was Arctic air that came in behind that front that moved through on Friday. Unlike recent fronts that have been more Pacific in nature, where it just pretty much gets rid of the, the humidity and then that allows temperatures to cool down. This was just this cold Arctic air mass. 16 Casper, tw uh, 10, pardon me, at Bismarck. A couple of days ago, it was actually down to zero and below zero up there in Cutbank, Montana. So the cold air is definitely here, and for us, it is going to be sticking around, as you saw, for a good chunk of the weekend going into the weekend. 55 degrees at noon. Sunny skies. A couple of high clouds out there, and then clouds will continue to thicken up as we go into later afternoon. 61 for high temperature, 10 below normal. Then tomorrow, we start off with some showers around the area. And not going to be a wash up, but just enough to make the roads slippery in the morning. We'll clear out later on in the afternoon. Plenty of sunshine. That next front moves through. So that just any sort of attempt at warming, it's going to trim that off. So we stay on the cool side midweek. Another small chance of rain on Thursday and yet another chance at a couple of showers, maybe by Saturday with yet another front. So it's definitely a fall pattern every Two, three, four days. Now the front comes through here. These aren't as powerful as the one that moved through Friday, but then again, we were very warm and humid out ahead of that front. So it looks like Sunday is uh, today. It's probably the best day to put up decorations if you want to get up, start early for Christmas decorations. Probably so. Now tomorrow in the afternoon, Tuesday is going to be nice as well, but it'll be just a just a hair not as cold okay. today. So, all right, decorations. It's probably what I'm going to be doing later today. Me too. Not me. I'll be. Sipping on some coffee, sitting outside, enjoying this cool, crisp weather. <laughs> you want to come to my house and get up on the ladder? <laughs> I'll, be, I'll, give you, I'll help you. Here. <laughs> well, folks, I'm super excited about this. The Fort Aww. Worth Zoo in Texas has something to celebrate. A bouncing baby gorilla. So take a look at the new arrival named Bruno. Oh, 
So cute. The zoo in a Facebook post says the gorilla was born on November 6th to its parents, Gracie and Elmo. He came in at around four to five pounds. That's normal for newborn gorillas. The infant is only the second ever Western lowland gorilla born at the Fort Worth Zoo. Oh, well, Bruno. Welcome. welcome to Fort Worth. <laughs> welcome to this world, Bruno. He just looks so cute. Beautiful. All right, it's 817 and 41 degrees. And next, we have a look at some of last night's big game coverage and the latest scores. First, let's look at these lotter numbers. Pick three, seven, eight, nine, Fireball six, Daily four, eight, zero, four, eight, Fireball eight. All right, get those tickets out. The lucky numbers for cash, five, one, 11, 27, 32, and 35. Texas Lottery, those numbers are one, 19, 24, 38, 39, and 48. And Powerball, 16, 20, 44, 57, 58, Powerball 6, Power Play 4, good luck. Welcome back and now to some sports. The bi-district round of the UIL football playoffs wrapped up yesterday at Ferris Stadium. Harlan taking on Del Rio in Class 6A. Late first quarter, Hawks get on board first. Quarterback Noah Ferris goes deep for Mickey Dessing, who hauls it in for the 27-yard touchdown. Great pass right there. You can see it on your screen. It's 7-0 Harlan. Second quarter, offense stays hot. This time, Jacob Gonzalez takes the handoff, finds some running room, and powers in for the 14-yard score. That makes it 14-0 Harlan. And the Hawks just pour it on from there as we head to the big game coverage scoreboard. Now the Hawks win it 42 to three and in the first round of the TAPS playoffs, Central Catholic falls to Dallas Bishop Lynch 41 to 21. Now births at state are on the line yesterday in high school volleyball. And there was a great crowd in hand at Littleton Gym. La Vernia taking on Belleville in the class 4A regional final. Bears pulling away in the first set. Mackenzie Blount delivers with a cross court kill. Bears take the first 25 to 21. This one goes the distance. A full five set match. Bears hanging tough late. Bailey Shelbyline with some perfect placement on this roll shot makes it 14 to 11 game in the fifth. But they can't quite clutch out the win. Sydney McKay seals an epic match with this kill. The Bears come up just short of the state tournament. Three sets to two is the final. Now in Class 2A, Johnson City falls to Schellenberg in straight sets. And in Class 1A, DeHannis returns to the state tournament for the fourth time in the last six years by sweeping Neshes in the Class 1A regional final. The Cowgirls will be the only representative from our region at state. Go Cowgirls! That's right, go Cowgirls! <laughs> All right, 823, 42 degrees. A new project at Disneyland aiming at helping those with disabilities feel included. What they added to the new ride coming up. Good morning, San Antonio. I'm Jonathan Cotto. I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, November 13th. Love to have you on with us this morning, Jonathan. I am Jonathan. happy to be here. I am so happy to be here, and I'm joined by you. It's always so much fun being here in the morning, and, and with Mike as well. We try to have fun. Uh, Jonathan looking really handsome in his beard, and so is Mike for No Shave November. You are very kind. And <laughs> as last, last check, we are in first place, thanks to y'all for uh, donating. First place in the country, wow. our team is Team KSAT. Of course, we finished second place last year, so keep those donations coming. Last check, I think we've got more than $6,000 out there. So. Thank you very much. All right, take a look outside right now, and you can see a couple of high clouds are out there. 41 degrees out at the airport. The normal low is in the low 50s, so we're just a little bit more than 10 degrees below normal. We did bottom out uh, at 38 at the airport this morning. 25 is the dew point. Very dry air, and we didn't have any clouds overnight, so we had no blanket on top of us. Dry air, light wind, perfect situation for allowing these temperatures to really get down there. It has warmed up above freezing finally at Kerrville Comfort, both at 33, 35 at Bulverde, and at least on this map, no more freezing temperatures, but a lot of folks in the Hill Country did get below freezing and uh, wind chill temperatures. In some spots, there's a bit of a breeze, New Braunfels, San Antonio, and uh, Rio Medina, so a slight bit of a wind chill. Now, even though temperatures are above that freeze warning had been in effect, now where there's been widespread freezings, we won't see any more freeze warnings issued throughout the rest of this season. That's just to kind of uh, warn about the first freeze. So cold and beautiful this morning. A couple of those high clouds. Clouds are going to be increasing throughout the day. We're going to hit a high temperature today of 61 degrees. And then tomorrow, 
We're going to have somewhat of a wet start. Clouds going to continue to thicken up. Moisture comes back in here. We'll have a few showers around the area. Maybe a few thunderstorms, especially down to the southeast. Once again, 60 for a high temperature. And we'll see sunshine in the afternoon. That's associated with yet another front, which is going to keep temperatures on the definitely the chilly or if you will cold side throughout the rest of the week. We're going to be well below normal on both ends of the scale all week long. Another rain chance way down the road. More on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, Jonathan. Thank you, Mike. A family is safe on the north side after a house fire. Firefighters say it happened on Cadbury Drive just before 3 o'clock this morning. The fire quickly spread, but first responders were able to knock it out. The home suffered heavy damage, but the cause has not been determined. This morning, San Antonio police say a husband and wife were involved in a deadly shooting overnight on the city's west side. It happened on 200 block of Randall Avenue around 2 20 early this morning. LCPD says two men got out of a car and shot at a husband and wife who were arriving at their grandparents' home. The husband was hit multiple times and died at the scene. The wife was also shot multiple times and taken to University Hospital in serious condition. So far, police haven't said anything about the suspects. For the first time since its discovery, a family is opening up about human remains found near a flea market where their loved one was last seen six years ago. Maria Jesus Yamas disappeared on November 20th in 2016 at a flea market off of State Highway 16. But last year in September, a group of dove hunters found a skull near where Maria was last seen, about 3,200 feet away from the flea market a place Maria's son, Refugio, says they're familiar with. We were up and down that area so much, and for a skull to be found, it's hard to believe we couldn't miss something like that. We want to mention that today there will be a memorial for beloved San Antonio radio host Russell Rush. Yeah, Russell Rush, he was a radio host for 96.1 now and a longtime friend of KSAT 12. He passed away last month after battling a long battle with T-cell lymphoma. The memorial will be at Tech Port Arena. Doors will open at 2 p.m. The memorial will begin at 3 p.m. His family has also set up a memorial website for him where fans can share their favorite memory of Russell. You can find that link on KSAT.com. Now the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department is offering free entry to all Texas state parks today in honor of veterans and active military. Now the daily entrance fees will be waived for all day use. Reservations are highly recommended since some parks are expected to reach their capacity limit. Additionally, those who purchase hunting and fishing licenses can help support the Veterans Commission's Veterans Assistance Fund by adding donations. You can visit that website for more information, ksat.com. Attention all San Antonio Public Library hold card holders. You can now stream videos on Canopy. That's a streaming platform designed for to support literacy and critical thinking for all ages. That's according to the news release from the library. To start using Canopy, all users need to do is enter their library card number on the program website or app. Access to Canopy Kids also included in the library's subscription. And tomorrow is World Diabetes Day, and experts say prevention is the best treatment. It really is, and that's why later this morning, University Health and the San Antonio Food Bank, they are teaming up to host a free health fair. So free glucose screenings will be offered, as well as fresh produce. It's also a chance to learn more about the disease. Remember, it's not just type 2 diabetes. There's also type 1 diabetes. They're very different. It's happening from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. this morning at the Texas Diabetes Institute. That's on South Zamora. We have all that information posted for you over on our website, ksat.com. The power situation in Washington next year becoming clearer overnight as a Senate race in Nevada is projected to go to incumbent Democrat Catherine Cortez Masto facing a challenge by Republican Adam Luxalt, who was endorsed by former President Trump. And Mary Alice Parks breaks down what this means for both parties in the near future. This morning, Democrats coming up aces in Nevada, now projected to win the Senate seat there and with it, control of the Senate. Tonight, with the victories in Arizona and Nevada, 
Democrats will remain the majority party in the Senate, and I will remain majority leader. This is a great night. It's a great night for Democrats. It's a great night for our candidates who won, and it's a great night for America. President Biden overseas celebrating the win. And I'm incredibly pleased by the turnout. And I think it's a reflection of uh, the quality of our candidates. Democratic Senator Catherine Cortez Masto, the first Latina elected to the U.S. Senate, edging out her Republican challenger, Adam Laxalt, and headed back to Washington now for a second term. The largest county in the state reporting results from additional mailed-in ballots overnight, giving the senator a lead of over 6,000 votes. Laxalt not yet commenting, but reminding voters on Twitter they have until Monday to check and make sure their ballots were verified and counted. With their majority in the Senate secured, thanks to Vice President Kamala Harris as a potential tie-breaking vote, the eyes appear to have it. The Democratic victory in Nevada takes the pressure off of Georgia, where Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock and Republican Herschel Walker are headed for a runoff. But both parties still have their feet on the gas in the Peach State, now hoping to pick up one more seat. Turn up the vote. <laughs> Republican Senator Rick Scott campaigning with Walker tomorrow and Governor Brian Kemp, who just won his own re-election, doubling down to try to get Walker over the finish line. Back out west, Democratic Senator Mark Kelly giving a victory speech after his race was projected by ABC News this weekend. I also want to thank our state's election officials, honorable Republicans and Democrats who are doing the important work of making sure that Arizonans' votes and voices are heard. His opponent, Blake Masters, backed by former President Trump, not yet conceding, as the state is still tabulating the final votes, but writing on Twitter, if at the end Senator Kelly has more of them than I do, then I will congratulate him on a hard-fought victory. That's Mary Alice Parker reporting. The Biden administration is no longer accepting applications for student loan forgiveness. This comes after a second federal court shut down the program. Now, White House officials say about 26 million had already applied and 16 million applications have been approved. Now, this week, a Texas judge ruled President Joe Biden overstepped in his authority in creating the program without congressional approval. A federal court is considering whether to impose a permanent ban. 800 people aboard a cruise ship in Australia have tested positive for COVID-19. The cruise line says that includes the passengers and crew aboard the Majestic Princess. They say all positive cases were mild symptoms are asymptomatic and the guests were isolated in their in their rooms. Those infected were eventually escorted off the ship from a separate exit. If you drive a Tesla, you may want to pay attention to this. Tesla has announced a voluntary recall of more than 40,000 vehicles that could have power steering issues. The recall involves Model S and Model X vehicles between uh, 2017 and 2021. Now, some motorists have reported their electric cars losing power steering on bumpy roads or after hitting a pothole. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration reports that the defect does not affect steering control itself. Instead, it means the driver has to use more strength to turn the wheel, especially at lower speeds. All right, a lot of our men here at KSAT, they are getting hairier for a good <laughs> cause because it's right. No Shave November. And I want to show the viewers, this is I've been talking about the smolder, all of the guys have been posting their <laughs> selfies, but Jonathan Cotto can teach a master class on the smolder because there it is. Oh, there it is. There, look at the hearts. <laughs> the hearts. Okay. Thank you, MJ, our all editor. Right, MJ, I see you. I see you. <laughs> so handsome. Okay, this if if this picture here, just the lighting, the look, Jonathan, this is everyone needs to donate now. <laughs> donate now. The <laughs> link is uh, at my Facebook. It's posted on my Facebook. You can go there, Jonathan Cotto. It's for a good cause, folks. And the picture, it's all just angles and good. <laughs> like, I'm to take my gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> so Mike is is Val the smolder on the ash. So yeah, you, you do have that. Team ash. smolder <laughs> is Jonathan Cotto. Look how handsome he is. Too kind, sir. Oh kind. my gosh. Okay, so you're in what place right now? I think I'm in fifth place. Yeah. Okay. At 375. Uh, towards my $500 goal. I know you're, you've been kind of poking at Max Massey that you're ahead of him. Hey, <laughs> but Team Jonathan Cotto, 
and of course Max Massey because Mike already has he's in the lead look at that 1700 Mark oh, Austin job, right Mike. behind him uh, and I love seeing this because we're number one in the country right now um, and we're goal is to get over twenty thousand dollars but take out your phones and just scan this QR code on your screen you can choose who you want to donate to but after that smolder and that picture we showed of Jonathan. I mean, you have to donate in honor. Sarah, Jonathan. we'll have to see. We'll have to revisit that leaderboard and see how effective that picture was. But I think just, it was pretty effective, Jonathan. It was in good lighting, folks. That's all it is, it's truly. <laughs> the master of selfies here. Yeah, we yeah, try. You are we the try. king. <laughs> all right, it's 840 and 43 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, Lightscape is here, folks. Why visitors can expect a lot of new attractions, along with some old favorites this year. And a new project at Disneyland is aiming at helping those with dis disabilities feel included. So what they added to a new ride, that's coming up. And taking a look outside through live cam of San Antonio, you are just looking beautiful this morning, 43 degrees. We'll be checking in with Mike to see how the weekend and the week ahead is going to play out. The midterm election still not decided. Who will control the House and the Senate? Sunday, exclusive Nancy Pelosi, one-on-one -on -one with George. What does this election mean for Biden, Trump, and the country? Plus, the Powerhouse Roundtable takes it all on Sunday on ABC's This Week. Well, it's a first in 60 in a 67 year history of Disneyland characters in wheelchairs are now represented in one of the attractions. The California theme park on Friday unveiled two dolls in wheelchairs on its small world ride. It's a small world ride. The project took more than half a year in what the resort says <coughs> is its aim to look with a magnifying glass for opportunities for inclusion. In a statement, the president of the nonprofit Disability Inn says the new dolls are a fantastic addition. Guests of the attraction ride ride a boat through scenes representing multiple countries with audio animatronic figures that represent children. All right, it's 43 degrees at 845, Mike, and man, it's like... I can't believe how long. This is like not one of those like quick snaps like we're used to here in San Antonio, like one day being 40, the next day being 80, you know, back and forth. Like last weekend, mm -hmm. Saturday was just fantastic. And then all of a sudden the humidity just came back in here really quickly. Brutal. It was humid, you know, warm all week long. And then that big front moved through on Friday. And this was an Arctic front. Unlike a lot of times, uh, the recent ones have been Pacific fronts, where it's just this drier air kind of coming on in here. This is the one, this air was born up there in, in Canada and up in the Arctic. And so... And it's going to be around for yeah, like a week. We get little reinforcing shots of this coming in here uh, every once in a while. And look <laughs> at this guy. He loves being outside. The dog uh, <laughs> yesterday, and he's just like, just those smells in the air. Yes, he absolutely. See the smile on his face? So Precious. scan that QR code, and uh, and you can send in some of your KSAC Connect pictures. So we do have a few high clouds out here. You can see a little bit of this high-level moisture, kind of that milky shade to the sky. But otherwise, I mean, it's kind of splitting hairs. It's absolutely beautiful. And this is 410 I-10 all the way. And little downtown skyline looks kind of small from this vantage point, obviously, off in the distance there. So 33 in comfort, just above freezing. Now, everybody has now moved above freezing, and we had a lot of freezing readings, even in northwestern portions of Bear County and out in most all of the, uh, the hill country. And now with this dry air, it's going to warm up relatively quickly. We do have a slight bit of a wind chill to deal with in a couple of spots. Feels like 38 out there at the airport, 36 at Rio Medina. And actually, the wind chill in uh, Hondo earlier this morning was down around the, the mid-20s, so not a a lot of wind and that's what a lot of temperatures to get so cool but just enough out there to add that little bit of a zing to some of these cool readings so we're going to make it up into the low 50s by 11 o'clock by the way that is just getting back up to a normal low temperature at 11 o'clock at 52 degrees so we're starting off or had started off 10 to 15 degrees below normal in most areas. And then we make it up to 61 later on today and the clouds will continue to thicken up as we go into tonight and by mid evening we're going to have mostly cloudy skies and then just basically cloudy skies overnight, and then we'll have a couple of showers moving on in. So this is what the computer model shows as the clouds continue to thicken up around here and overnight into tomorrow morning. And then we start to see just a couple of these light little sprinkly showers around, just enough to make the uh, the morning commute kind of, a, kind of a nuisance. So the roads are gonna be damp tomorrow. Allow yourself a little extra time, and then that'll be sticking around through the latter portion of the morning. They actually have a couple of thunderstorms, some stronger storms further off to the east by 
early afternoon. Then things will start to clear out from west to east as the next front moves on in here, which is going to be a reinforcing kind of oomph or push of this colder air. Also, you can see what's going on as far as the dew point. So we're very, very dry right now. Humidity comes back up. That's what's going to help out with some of the light sprinkles, showers, maybe some fog tomorrow morning. Then the front comes on through here, gets rid of the humidity. Then it starts to creep back up on Friday and then another front's going to be moving on through here. We were talking about Arctic air. Yeah, this is the real McCoy 17 Omaha 10 Bismarck 16 in Casper one point even last week as this air mass started moving in. It was below zero in Cutbank, Montana. So all this came down from Canada as opposed to just the Pacific fronts, which bring in that drier air from the West. So here's what's going on with the upper level steering winds. There was the first low that moved through, brought the front through on Friday. This next one comes in our direction. This is going to help to increase the humidity and then give us a chance for some rain early tomorrow morning. Then we get the next kind of reinforcing shot of cooler air coming on in here for the middle portion of the week. And by the latter part of the week, the next low is going to try and dig down in our direction. This will give us another chance for a couple of light showers, not any Unfortunately, the air is so dry, not any big rain chances around here, just uh, kind of some of those nuisance showers. And this will then pull down another nice chunk of some cold air. Keep this cold air kind of in place as we go even into the start of next week of Thanksgiving week. 55 degrees and uh, got a lot of sunshine on there, kind of that milky shade to the sky at noon. And then we'll have more clouds thickening up 61 for a high temperature later on today. Then tonight clouds will thicken up and we get a lot more moisture coming back on in here. Then we have a chance for a couple of showers around tomorrow morning. So like I said, allow yourself a little extra time. You'll definitely need a jacket. 45 starting off tomorrow, getting up to 60, but we'll have more sunshine in the afternoon. Beautiful day on Tuesday, but definitely cool. And look at those low temperatures staying right around 40, give or take. And high temperatures are going to be only in the 50s throughout a good chunk of next week. Wow. Normal high is 72. Love it. Yeah. I've already taken all my winter clothes out. I have my scarves out, my coats, jackets. Have you I'm put ready. up the tree? No tree. That, that's, you're like a hard I'll probably Thanksgiving wait till like, person. I love Thanksgiving, but I probably won't put up a tree till like mid December. Wow. Because I like oh, a wow. real tree. I like a real yeah. tree, just the smell of it. But that mid December though? Yeah. That way it can go that through is January. so late, Jonathan. <laughs> I'm not shaming you. You do you. I'll do, yeah, mid December. That way um, the tree lasts longer. There's nothing like a real tree. I, I love a real tree. Completely agree with you, but unfortunately, they, even if you keep, you know, they're eventually going to get dried out and stuff, and it yeah. becomes just a mess when those needles all fall. That's my the husband the vetoed <laughs> the real trees. He was like, nope, we're getting a, a fake one. Unfortunately, the convenience factor has overtaken them. Right, trees. right. Some of those fake ones look really real, so. Mm. It's not the real one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Speaking of the holidays, holiday lights are starting to go up around the city. So here's a first look at the Botanical Gardens for Lightscape. The Winter Light Spectacular is now open to guests. If you went last year, some favorites will be back like the Winter Cathedral. But some of the new features include a flower forest and visitors can expect a lot of new attractions. If, your fav if you were here last year, your favorites are back. The fire garden reimagined over the lake. The blue bonnets are twice in size. And we also have 80% of the show is brand new. Lightscape goes until January 8th. That's the blue bonnets right there. That was probably my favorite thing. Okay. Was that, that field of blue bonnets. I did yeah. not go last year, so I feel like I, I need to go. Same. I, f I feel like I have to check it out this year. I also sure. saw that there was like 11 proposals last year really? at this event. Um, so hopefully more proposals happen. <laughs> my <laughs> advice would be go in an off day. <laughs> Don't try and go around Thanksgiving. Because you said it was like there shoulder was a, to shoulder. Yeah, a ton of people there around Thanksgiving. So well, there you go, folks. You have a chance to go there uh, up until January 8th. The time is 8.51 to 44 degrees. Coming up tomorrow on GMSA for World Diabetes Day, we speak to local experts about the disease and way to man ways to manage. It's pretty chilly out there. Just stay in bed and throw the blankets back over your heads. Best advice there. 44 degrees right now in town. We've warmed up from uh, our low this morning of 38, uh, mid 30s in portions of the hill country. 
Clouds are going to be thickening up throughout the day and we'll have a high temperature of 61 just like yesterday, well below normal by 10 degrees. And then we've got the chance of rain tomorrow morning. So allow yourself some extra time and stays pretty chilly all week long. Love to see it yep. today and Tuesday. Best days to put up your Christmas decorations. That's right. Yeah. I'm going in about 10 minutes. All right. <laughs> hey, thank you, gentlemen, for oh, joining me this Sunday. Pleasure. Good to see you as always. Anytime.